Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today I would like to continue talking about different types of um, ordinary differential equations. In this case, it's about linear uh, differential equations. So there are three types which I covered, will cover, including this lecture, um, of ordinary differential equations. One is um, separable, when you can separate y from x into different parts of the equation and basically integrate it left and right separately. Uh, then the second was homogeneous. Um, that's where basically everything depends on the ratio x divided by y or y divided by x. And, uh, and we, we substitute function y as a product of z times x, where z is another function. And the third is linear equation. That's my third lecture in this series, um, which uh, I would... Uh, uh, just repeat the general uh, approach to solving these equations and I will consider uh, three different examples. Uh, this lecture is part of the course of advanced mathematics for uh, teenagers presented on unizor.com. Um, it's probably better if you watch this lecture from the website. You just go to the front menu. Uh, it's uh, Math for Teens, Calculus, um, and then you have ordinary differential equations and different types of equations. Um, the site is free, it does not have any advertisement, so uh, you don't even have to sign in. But if you do, you can take exams, for instance. Well, actually, you can take exams even without uh, signing on, but it will not be remembered by the system. So in any case, um, so let me just proceed with linear equations. First of all, let me just repeat something which I did already once when I was um, uh, presenting just the just general view of uh, ordinary differential equations. So that's a repetition, but a very healthy and needed one. So what is linear differential equations and how to deal with it? Linear is something like this. Y is a function of X. So this is derivative, this is the function itself, and f, g, and h are different functions of s. Now, why is it called linear? Well, obviously, because y has y and y derivative uh, are uh, linearly uh, involved in this particular um, equation. Now, how to solve it? Again, that was addressed before, but I'm just repeating. Well, first of all, uh, we do consider that function f at x is not identically equal to zero because otherwise it's not a differential equation. So wherever it's not equal to zero, we just divide everything and we will have another function, uh, another equation. Where u function is basically g of x divided by f at x and v is uh, h divided by f. So that's a simplification which leads to a little bit simpler representation of our equation. Now next, and here is the key to the solution basically. We are trying to find a solution of this particular equation in a specific form as a product of, uh, of, of two functions and then I will basically determine each one of these functions. Now, if I represent it this way, then the derivative is equal to that's a product of two functions, so derivative of the product, derivative of the first times second plus derivative of second times first, right? So. This is something which we can substitute into this equation to get the following. So instead of y derivative, we put this. Then we have u times y, which is u times p times q, right? y is p times q and v equals to zero. 
I'm not writing of x, all of these are functions of x, so it's just simpler for me, right? Now, um, this equation, although it looks a little bit more complex than this, can actually be represented the following way. Um, let me just combine these two and uh, take p outside of the parentheses having q derivative plus u q. And whatever is left would be the second component. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find such a function q which uh, uh, puts this to zero and once I found this function q I can substitute it here then it, it will be a, a known function and resolve this equation for p which is easy so this is easy to resolve for q uh, I'll, I'll show you how it's a, sep a simple separation and this is even simpler for p and that's how I will find p and q and their product would be my function y, right? So, the q from here is dq by dx that's what derivative is plus u times q is equal to zero which means dq divided by q equals to minus u dx am I right? U Q goes here, Q goes down, DX goes up, and the minus sign. Yes. Now I can separately integrate these functions, right? U is a known function of X, so I can integrate it, whatever it is. And this also can be integrated. This is a logarithm of absolute value of Q. So it's equal to this integral. from which I derive q is equal to well it's actually plus or minus q but it doesn't really matter much so uh, it would be e to the power minus integral u dx so anyway somehow q is defined whether it's a plus q or minus q doesn't really matter we have to find just one particular function q doesn't matter which one so I don't I don't even have to put the constant there like plus plus c or something like this any q will work as long as this is equal to zero and then from here I will determine p now how to determine p if q is known well that's even simpler because now if I know the q and pq plus v is equal to zero then derivative of p is equal to minus v divided by q so I have to do is just integrate these two things and get the p. Well, basically that's it. That's the approach. Now I'm going to do a couple of examples, well, three examples. It's more than a couple. And uh, see this methodology applied in practice, all right? Okay, my first example is why derivative plus y plus x is equal to zero okay so let's represent y is equal to p times q y derivative is equal to p derivative q plus p times q derivative so my equation becomes p derivative q plus p q derivative that's y derivative plus y which is pq plus x is equal to zero right I combine the middle part will be p times q derivative plus q plus p derivative q plus x is equal to zero all right pq times x okay so let's first find out what brings this to zero right dq by d by q <laughs> by q not by x equals minus dx all right this is dq by dx 
So Q goes here, dx goes there. Now I can integrate both parts, getting logarithm absolute value of Q. Well, again, I don't really need absolute value because I need just one particular solution. Is equal to minus x. Right? So Q is equal to e to the power of minus x. Okay, now let's find p from equating this to zero. Okay, so let me put q is equal to e to the power of minus x. Just in case, let me check. e to the power of minus x, if I differentiate it, it would be e to the power of minus x times derivative of minus x, which is minus 1, so it's minus e to the power of minus x, and plus q, which is e to the power of minus x, that's zero, so that's fine. So now, let's solve the second part for p. So, p derivative q plus x is equal to zero, p is equal to minus x divided by e to the power of minus x, which is equal to minus x times e to the power of x, right? 1 over e to the power of minus x is just e to the power of x. Now I have to integrate it, so p of x is equal to integral of minus x e to the power of x dx. Let me put minus in front of it. Makes my life easier. Now this is a typical integration by parts, right? So it's equal to minus. Um, so we have u and e to the power of x and dx is basically dv. It's u, x is u, and e, e, since derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x, so differential of e to the power of x is whatever it is. So it's u times v, which is uh, x times e to the power of x minus e to the power of x times dx. Integral of this and this is equal to obviously e to the power of x. So I have this minus and this minus will be plus so it will be p is equal to, uh, so this is just e to the power of x, so e to the power of x can be outside the parentheses, and in the parentheses I will have uh, 1 minus x. Now, where should I put the constant? Uh, well, probably here, right? So, uh, e to the power of x, which is this, now this is minus x e to the power of x, okay, and plus c, plus c goes here. Now, why as a product of these two? So I will have to multiply this times this, so it's 1 minus x plus c times e to the power of minus x. That's my answer. Now, it would be nice to check it, basically substitute to this. I actually did it in the notes for these lectures, which are available on uni, uh, unizor.com. And uh, I have my answer here, it corresponds, so it, it checks. But I do recommend you to check it yourself. Whenever you do some kind of a uh, solution of this type, always check if it satisfies your equation. So that's the answer. Let's move on. Next.
Okay. So this is again a linear differential equation, and uh, the only thing is it has this function cosine of x with uh, derivative of y, and we have agreed that first thing which we do, we divide by this function to uh, to have y uh, derivative by itself. So we divide everything by cosine. So I have y times sine divided by cosine, that's a tangent, right? Minus 1 over cosine, which is actually second of x equals to 0. Actually, let's just write it as a 1 over cosine. It would be a little bit more understandable for me. Okay, so that's our equation. Now let's do exactly the same as usual. y is equal to p times q. y derivative is p derivative q plus p times q derivative. Our equation looks like uh, p derivative q plus p q derivative, that's y uh, derivative, plus p times q times tangent of x and minus 1 over cosine of x equals to 0. These are two members which I can combine and uh, so it's p times q derivative plus q tangent of x uh, plus p derivative q minus 1 over cosine x equals to 0. Okay, so first we will find some q which uh, turns this into uh, into 0. Okay, fine. So let's do that. So, dq by dx uh, equals minus q tangent x, right? So, dq divided by q goes tangent times dx, right? Well, actually what would be even better is instead of tangent, I will put sine of x divided by cosine of x. You know why? Because derivative of the cosine is minus sine. So I can actually have this is d cosine x divided by cosine x. Right? Differential of cosine, it's derivative of cosine, which is minus sine times dx. And now I have a very easy integral. From the left I will have logarithm, if I will integrate this, I will have logarithm q. But again, let's just not use absolute value, because we need just one particular solution, equals to logarithm of cosine of x, right? from which q is equal to cosine of x. We got that. Well, we can use plus, plus c, but it doesn't really matter because we need only one of them. Now, unfortunately, I wiped out my uh, equation, so let me just write it down again. What was it? It was p star q plus p q star uh, plus p q tangent of x minus 1 over cosine of x equals to 0. Now this I have taken care of. So I need to this combine with this where q is this. So I have p times cosine of x that's pq equals to 1 over cosine of x. So 
so I have uh, P is equal to 1 over cosine square x. Now, which function has a derivative 1 over cosine uh, square? Is it tangent? Tangent x derivative. What is tangent derivative? Well, since I don't remember, I will derive it right now. But I think that's tangent derivative equals. Um, so derivative of sine divided by cosine, which is uh, 1 plus sine and derivative of 1 over cosine which is minus 1 cosine square times minus minus sine of x so that would be plus so it's 1 plus sine square divided by cosine square of x cosine goes here would be 1, 1 over cosine squared. Correct. So that's right. I do re still some remember something. So my function p from this is equal to tangent x plus some kind of a constant c. All right. And Q was, what was the Q? Q was cosine, right? Yes, Q was cosine. So, PQ, which is Y, is equal to tangent times cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine, times cosine would be sine of X. Plus C cosine x, where c any constant. Again, you can check it, and it corresponds to whatever my solution is, and I did check it on, on the unicorn, on unisor.com, and I suggest you to do it yourself first. And always, whenever you are solving differential equations, or any kind of equations, checking is a must, always. And the last problem I have, okay, logarithm x times y uh, derivative plus y equals logarithm 2x plus x square. Well, it doesn't look right uh, it, it doesn't look like a, a linear equation right now but obviously if i have logarithm here and here and this is just a function i can raise e to this power and i will get what i will get x times y plus y on the left e to the power of logarithm of something is something right equals e to the power of this plus this when, whenever you are raising into power, which is a sum of 2, it's a product of powers, right? So it's e to the power of logarithm 2x, which is 2x, times e to the power of x squared. So that's my final uh, equation. Now, is it linear? Well, it's linear already, but it's not normalized because this is still a function at y, uh, at y derivative. So we'll divide now by x and I will have this. Now this is a linear equation. This is the function 1 over x. This is function 2e to the power x squared. So this is a linear equation and I can uh, attempt to solve it use, using the procedure which we did before. So again, y is equal to p times q y derivative is equal to p q plus p u prime substitute it here so I will have p derivative q plus p q derivative plus 1x times p q so it's p q divided by x 
uh, minus 2e to the power of x squared equals to 0, right? I just converted everything to the left. Now, this is combined with this. P is outside, so I'm looking for a solution. Uh, Q prime plus Q over x equals to 0. So that would bring me to 0 these two. Okay? Okay, so let me try. Um, so it's uh, dq by dx equals minus q over x. Right? From which follows q dx from which follows that logarithm q equals minus logarithm x whenever I integrate these two integral of 1 d dq divided by q is logarithm q again I ignore the absolute value and this is minus logarithm x for the same reason and now I have to find q by raising e to these powers so I will have q is equal to e to the power of minus uh, minus logarithm uh, so e to the power of minus logarithm x that's minus 1 so it goes to the top so that's x to the power of minus 1 that's what it is let me check just in case q derivative is 1 over x squared minus 1 over x squared and this is plus 1 over x squared so it's correct now I will use it to combine this and this and try to find p derivative which brings this to 0 okay so q is equal to one over x and the uh, I don't need this because I'm not going to check it anyway so my p derivative q minus 2e to the power of x square equals q is one over x so uh, I have this or I can put x on the on the right now I have to take integrals now 2x dx dx now 2x and dx is actually a uh, differential of x square right so that makes my my life much easier so this is just an integral of e to the power of t let's say where t is x square which is e to the power of t plus constant which is e to the power of x square plus constant c that's my p so I've got p and I've got x so p times x would be what? y is equal to p which is this times x which is divided by x so e to the x squared plus c divided by x where c any constant again it's good to make a checking checking is made on uh, uni unisor.com my answer is correct so everything's supposed to be checked now um, why don't you just go to the website uh, ignore 
all these calculations which I am actually putting in writing as the notes for this lecture and just try to solve exactly the same three problems just by yourself with the checking and that will be a, a good exercise in linear uh, differential equations. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.